All right, so the next thing that we want to do with this site model is actually project all of the more detailed line work that we drew in our previous tutorial up to this site. To do that, I'm going to go back to wireframe because it's going to be easier for me to see my line work. So I'm going to go down here and turn on my line work. And we have um, this detailed uh, site model and we can project these lines the same way we did with the buildings. So I'm going to select everything. I had it as a group before, so I don't need to go and select each individual layer. But if you have to uh, select individual layers, just make sure that um, only the layers you need are turned on. So for me, I don't need the building footprints because I already projected them up to the surface. I don't need the city blocks because I've drawn those myself with these curb edges. Um, all I really need are the light poles, the trees, the center lines, which are now the curbs, and the lawn, which is these paths and planting areas in the park. Now, before we project these curves, I want to recommend that you go ahead and save your work because projecting the curves, depending on how many detailed and complicated curves you have, can be pretty labor intensive for your computer. And I wouldn't want your model to crash um, and for you to lose any work. So make sure you have saved your file first before you undertake this action. Now we can select all of the curves that we want to project onto the surface and use this command project curves. And as we look at these options, just make sure that your delete input is set to no. If yours is set to yes, just click it again to set it to no. This just means do you want Rhino to delete all of the inputs um, that you're projecting up? And we don't want that because we want to have a flattened version and we want to have a projected version. So hitting no means it's going to maintain the flattened version of your line work as well as projecting new lines up onto your topography. Now we have to select our surface and, po and poly surfaces that we want to project onto. And we can do that by selecting the surface. And if you're not able to select the surface in wireframe view, just go over to shaded view and you can select it there. I'm gonna go back to my wireframe view. And now when you have all your lines and your, your surface is selected, you can hit enter and let Rhino do its thing. And it's going to probably take some time. So you might wanna go get a cup of coffee. All right, so um, it's been a few minutes and now I have my projected line work. I can tell it's projected because if I look at it in my front view over here, I can see that it's following the edge of the um, of the surface, um, it's no longer flat. So that's what I want to see. I wanna see it draping itself kind of over top of my topography. So um, why are we doing this? Well, because we are going to recut these sections. Previously in um, the earlier tutorial where I was just demonstrating how to create this topography, I cut a few sections directly through the site, but now I'm gonna get rid of those just by selecting them and hitting delete. And I'm going to cut some new sections. So making sure that I am on my model layer, I'm going to make sure that I'm on a layer called section cuts. I created this last time. You might want to create a new layer for this. And I'm gonna just make sure I'm on that layer. And now I'm going to go back into my plan view, which I will set to wireframe. And I'm gonna decide where my section cut is happening. You need to do this intelligently based on your site and where you have done your other series of sections and your path through the site. So I don't know um, where that lies for everybody. So that's a decision you'll have to make. But what I can do is just demo how to cut through this right now. I'm gonna draw a guideline. So I'm gonna use L for line. And I'm just going to cut a guideline where I would like to cut my section. So maybe what I would like to do is cut um, a very long site section kind of through this part of the site. And um, again, you'll have to decide where that transverse section should be cut based on the work that you've done so far. Um, but this is gonna be my guideline. And now I'm just gonna use the section command like that. It's gonna say, select all the objects for sections, and I'm gonna select everything that I can see on the screen because I want it to cut through all of this uh, material. And then I'm gonna go make sure that my assign layers is current layer so that everything that's cut in my section corresponds to what um, the layers are that it's cutting through. 
um, it's going to ask me to join the curves. I can decide if I want to do that either by section plane, by poly surface, or by none. And I think I would like to do it by none because I want to make sure that I can individually assign line weights to the different section cuts. And I can, though, decide to group my objects. And I do want to group them so that I can move the entire group of cut objects over and off to the side. So now that I have those options selected, I'm going to uh, reselect all of these objects and hit enter. And now it's going to say start of section. So I'm going to use my guideline as the start and end point. And we see that uh, Rhino draws in the section. You can see this yellow line with a bunch of different points. That's the only section I need right now. So I'm just going to use enter to stop the command. And now um, if I click away and then I go over here, I can select this group. So this is why we grouped this section cut so that it would be easy to select after we've finished the command. And I can go ahead and move this section cut off to the side. I'm just using my gumball and the shift key to constrain that. You see I had another section previous that I was demoing. I'm just going to move that down to the side and I'm going to move this over here. And if I go into my perspective view and I use ZSA to focus in on my selected objects, I can see that I have a section cut. I have uh, points at all of the different places where my section cut is corresponding to places where it was cut through on the site. All right, that's a little bit helpful. Um, what can we do with this? The first thing that we wanna do is rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it using this uh, blue part of my gumball and I'm gonna use shift to constrain it, but that is not getting me to a horizontal um, rotation. So I'm gonna use the rotate command. RO for rotate, select the object, hit enter. And the starting point, I'm just gonna use this point and the end point, I will use this one. And I'm just going to um, use shift to um, constrain it down. So I wanna constrain it down here. And now what we need to do is rotate it in three dimensions. So we see that it's kind of standing upright right now. What we need to do is use our gumball to lie it flat. So I'm gonna use the red rotation tool here and I'm just going to hit shift and constrain that in the uh, Z direction. And now if we go back to our plan view, you can see that it is lying flat on the page. Okay, well that seems fine, but there's a lot of information here in these points that aren't really corresponding to anything on the plan. I'm just gonna get rid of my old section and move this up in space. What we can do is um, turn off our topography because I don't think we're gonna need that anymore. So I'm just going to use my quick uh, menu, which is accessed with my center mouse button and hit on this uh, light bulb and just hide the object. So now I can grab this plan and I'm going to take it like this you know what we need to do? Make sure that we have this section cut line as well. Now I can duplicate it and bring it over. And now I'm gonna rotate this in the same orientation as my section cut. So I'm gonna use RO for rotate, and I'm gonna use the beginning of this line and the end of this line, and just use shift to constrain this down to 90 degrees. So we have our uh, section here, and what we need to do is relate the, the section cut with the plan so that we can continue projecting and knowing where things are happening. One thing we can do to make this easier for ourselves is, um, for example, if with this cut line, I want to look in this direction, which is west. So that's why I've oriented my plan west. If you were wanting to look east, you would have to rotate this line work in the opposite direction. So you would have to um, turn it around like that, and then you would have to flip your section so that it corresponds to the direction you're looking. I'm going to use this cut line as a trim object and get rid of all of the information I don't need on this side. On this side. Yeah, let's hit TR for trim and go ahead and see if we can trim most of the objects below this line. And we're doing a pretty good job here. Most of these lines are getting 
going away. I'm just using my uh, selection window to select any lines that might be intersecting with this trim object. And then I can ungroup this. I can press enter to end the command and ungroup this like that. And now I can just select everything else that's below um, and get rid of it. It looks like this is a group as well. So I'm gonna ungroup that too. So remember I grouped together some of the contours to move them before. So what we're gonna do is just ungroup, select everything here and go ungroup and just keep going ungroup a couple of times to make sure that all the groups have been ungrouped and that we are now just selecting the objects on this uh, part of the horizon. So now I can get rid of those and get rid of this information. All right, so now I have my plan oriented and I'm just going to match it up with my section cut. How I can do that is by just drawing a line from this edge where the end of the section should be. And I'm using shift to constrain this in the Z, in the wide direction. So I'm just drawing a line up and then I'm going to move my section so that the edge corresponds with this line. So I'll use M for move and just drag this over here and match it up with this line. Now I can get rid of that line. We should now have a section that corresponds with all of the, the um, places on the section cut. So I'm going to actually drag this down below just to make it a little bit easier since uh, it's easier to work when we're closer to this um, plan.